that I'm going to become a one-man storytelling band. I was not the only one mm -hmm. um, who was doing that, but I decided, yes, my, my final year's story that I told, a wonderful Christmas story, I thought, that's, what I, that's the kind of format that I want to work in. Mm -hmm. Now, my dear mother had always told a Christmas carol in Dutch under the Christmas tree, so I had a very, very long-standing love of Scrooge and Marley, etc. So I decided, well, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I practiced that for about a year or something like that. I worked very slowly, but that's how I am. And then I began my my one-man band touring existence, mm -hmm. and basically that is what I've done for the past. 10, 12 years, and um, it's been absolutely wonderful. I've worked um, mainly in Camp Hill, but also churches, schools, other things, and it's been absolutely delightful. I can truthfully say that I've had as much artistic satisfaction as I need. It's, it's mm -hmm. always wonderful. I get to play all the good parts, I mm -hmm. um, can decide what I want to do and it's been absolutely wonderful to perform for special needs people. They are such a wonderful audience, more open and receptive and right. artistic and on quite a perceptive plane than most other audiences that I've mm -hmm. had the privilege to work with. So. Um, and I'm still alive. I sort of managed to, to earn a living and um, I wouldn't want it to be any other way. Um, when I did performances of The Little Prince in, together with Laurie Porter Carrera here in the United States, um, Barbara Reynolds, who was directing the mystery dramas here, came to see it and she had just lost uh, then Capasius and she saw the performance here in the fellowship and she has a way of reeling you in. She so does, doesn't she? Jeeps and she says, couldn't um, you do that? A temptress. <laughs> couldn't in you the best do that? Possible way. And of course I couldn't say no. And um, it's also been delightful to come here. Um, this is my fourth summer here now. I laughingly used to call it a working holiday and it's the stress on the work. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, sorry, it's been a long week. Day. Uh, day. Two. Um, it's absolutely wonderful to be here and to work with a group of really dedicated people in a beautiful theatre, beautiful environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, again, a lot of um, soul nourishment and soul satisfaction uh, she pays for my flight and puts me up in her wonderful mm -hmm. basement. There you go. And, um, yeah, I mean... Um, you don't need the Ritz. Um, I you wouldn't know. mind the Ritz, but yeah, yeah, right. if but it's if not it's on not, offer, then yeah, right. Spring Valley will have to do. Exactly. And it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So, and um, yeah, I've come to 56. I've done the fourth mystery drama again, and it's extraordinary that... Um, Mark Levine has also found himself here. And, right. Um, so we've been working on the fourth mystery drama together again where I met him. And um, he sort of, he said, I'm going to take a back seat. And of course he didn't. He was full on after two or three weeks um, managing and arranging. Right. So, he would have even been more if uh, his wife yeah, Barbara had been Barbara had been ill. Phil, Phil, yeah. yeah, so that also felt like an incredible roundabout. This is after 17 years that we sort of met up again. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. sort of were knotting things backstage and saying, yeah. isn't this inter interesting? We're Very, here again working together. Yes. So that's been a real destiny meeting again yeah. with Mark. And um, yeah. It'll be very interesting to see where uh, where it goes now. I'm 56. So third moon node. Third moon <laughs> node. So I've started to think, well, um, it's very nice being your own company and doing what you want, but I would like to work with other people. Laurie yeah. was a start and this is a start. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, what is and the there next might step? be the fifth uh, mystery drama um, on the horizon. We are very conscious not calling it the fifth mystery drama. Okay. Um, 
It is a play which has been written um, based on the characters of the mystery dramas. Um, Mark Levine had these extraordinary inspirations uh, for a drama and um, Michael Burton, um, who is an author living in New Zealand, um, actually ran with the ideas, but it was also a kind of more or less a group effort, a kind of chalice which mm -hmm. received this. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had workshop meetings. We went to Delphi in, in February and um, worked on them there. And it'll be very interesting to see um, what happens then uh, with it. And that's certainly a, a wonderful possibility. And there was another incredible kind of calming, sorry, kind of calming circle which came about. I've never felt the, the desire to go back to India, and I've never felt the desire to travel very much. Mm -hmm. But um, last September there was this Eurythmic company in London that said, Matt, um, we need somebody to speak for the green snake and the beautiful lily. Oh, yeah. And we're going to Switzerland for a little tour. And um, in March, we're going to go to India for a little tour. <laughs> so all the way back so to India, you come full circle. So I came full thir circle. Third, third moon node. And it was interesting because the, um, the performances were in what is now called Mumbai, which was mm -hmm. Bombay when I came there. Mm -hmm. And the other performances were in Hyderabad. And right almost in the middle between Bombay and Hyderabad is Pune or Pune as we now mm -hmm. supposed to call it mm -hmm. and that is where we lived so um, when the company had gone back to London um, I took a flight to Pune and I spent 10 um, no 10 sorry 10 days I, I um, thought that might be so, the yeah 10 days 10 days and uh, it was extraordinary to, to be back there again, I visited the little museum there and temples, but I also went back to, um, I found an extraordinary rickshaw driver, these motorized tuk-tuks, who was a kind of messenger from the God Sea, he came back every day and we became friends without words and Preet took me everywhere and um, I asked him to uh, show him on the map. That's where we used to live. So, mm -hmm. 45 years after we lived there, I stood in front of our old house. Wow. And wow. I thought, this is where I used to live. It's amazing. And it is extraordinary. I was, um, I was only partly there because it was so, it had changed incredibly. It was then quite barren. Now the, the mango trees and the palm trees were incredibly high over and above the house and all the little building plots around that had been left open were now filled in and um, yeah, I was in a kind of a haze, in a dream uh, to be there. And uh, after that we went to, uh, to our old school and it was... It was quite extraordinary to walk in there and I met the principal and you know, a new principal, the old principal, Father Schoch, who mm -hmm. passed over, of course, he was quite an old man already. And um, I sat in the old office and his um, vice principal, whatever it's called, showed me around and again, 45 years after I sat there, I stood in my old classroom. <laughs> And yeah, the old benches were still there, strong metal, mahogany, or whatever it's called. It was, they hadn't changed a lot. And sort of like going back to a former life, isn't it? It was, it was almost like that. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. the boys were still wearing the same uniforms, Loyola High School, Pune, mm -hmm. India. And um, yeah, it was, it was full circle. This is where I'd learned to speak English. And yeah. this is what allowed me to rejected Amsterdam drama school but then I went to London that allowed me yeah. uh, to to do yeah these tours through England to come to America do performances here and um, 
here we are. It's it's you, know, you start to was... see, well, you know, especially on on looking back, you know, also for years I thought, why on earth did I agonize doing that that history study, but playing a history professor in this <laughs> mystery drama um, is also extraordinary. And then uh, one last thing, which was really a kind of knock in the face, and I think that's probably good, a good ending. Um, three weeks after I had come back from India, I had a recording um, in a studio where I don't usually work, Horsham, about an hour outside of London. And when I was in Pune, I visited this wonderful little historical museum with beautiful old artifacts. And it was quirky and a little bit, yeah, a bit funny. A doctor had collected things and it had become a mania. The Kelkar Museum in Pune. And I bought the book and I'd read it and studied it and it was next to my bed. And then I went to this recording three weeks afterwards. I had some time to kill and I walked into the, uh, the charity shop there, the Oxfam shop. I usually look interesting books. I walked in there, no interesting tapes. My eyes went up. I recognized the picture. And there was a book, a description of this museum in Pune, where I had been three weeks before. And it's not an unknown museum, but it's absolutely Tiny. What are the chances of three weeks after walking into at random a charity shop? Ding! <laughs> and not only that, I then walked to the studio in a haze, in a daze, thinking, what does that mean? Yeah, right. There was a newspaper which I don't usually read, but again, I had some time to kill. I opened it at the centerfold. There was a big photograph, a beautiful photograph of an Indian gentleman with a beautiful turban and the inscription or whatever it's called, it said this was an Indian farmer on his way to an annual festival for some agricultural festival in the Maharashtra town of Pune in India. I don't know what it means but Puna, here I come. You never know what happens You never next. know. So... But you're open to it. I'm... And that's... To, to, open, to be open to the future, what more can you ask for? And to be conscious about it. Yeah. So... so well, thank you very much. Matthew, it's been a pleasure. And I'm sure these young people will really enjoy. And of course, you see, this is also one way how people can find you. If they Good. want to connect and do whatever, you know, do with you, then... Always welcome that's to what it email is. or whatever. There we go. All right, I'll put the connections. Good. All right, thank you. Thank you.